lifestyle. Sports cards and we live now. Jeremy Lee in the building and every guest that you ever needed. Sports cards after hours keep the hobby heated. Updates hobby talk like you never seen it. Sports cards live and nothing could ever beat it. Sports cards is a lifestyle. Sports cards and we live now. Welcome to another episode of Sports Cards Live with your host, Jeremy Lee. All right, good evening, everybody, and welcome to episode number 127 of Sports Cards Live. It is Saturday night, January the 15th, 2022. My name is Jeremy Lee. I want to thank last Saturday's guest. We had Tim Staczynski from Gemrate, and we had Leaf CEO Brian Gray. Check out those episodes. They are on the YouTube channel. I also want to let you all know that tomorrow on Collectible Live, my guest will be respected collector and personal friend Todd Poland. We will go live on Collectible at 7 o'clock Eastern. And later tonight on After Hours, our guest is none other than the writer, performer, video editor of that Sports Cards Live intro video that you just saw. His name is Sean Cates. You know him from his, from his Instagram account, Victory Investments. He'll be joining us later on on After Hours. And next Saturday, Adam Gray, Eric Myers will join me to cover the PWCC Premier Auction as always. All right. I want to say a few shout outs. I want to shout out Channel Supporter Whatnot. Check out their app for one minute auctions and buy it now. It's hosted around the clock by some of the best breakers in the hobby. Now, I do encourage the hobby not to judge all the great breakers on whatnot and all the great breakers in our hobby in general based on what certain breakers have done in recent days. We certainly here do not endorse that behavior and remind you that there are honest and integral breakers throughout our great hobby. I want to shout out the Sport Card Expo. They've expanded out west in Canada to Edmonton. Their Sport Card Expo Edmonton version will be April 15th to 22nd. And the Mint Collective has been postponed to March 25th to 27th in Las Vegas. I will be there. Very excited for that. I want to thank Dakota from Sports Card Anonymous for having me on his show this past week. And also Eric from Center Ice, Center Ice Cardcast for having me on their uh, podcast. Thanks to all the podcast listeners. You know I appreciate you guys. Hello to everybody in the comments. I see you all there. And thanks to all you subscribers to the show. Just past 4,200 subscribers. Very happy about that. Grateful for each and every one of you that do subscribe and tune in on a weekly basis. If you're not yet subscribed, please go ahead and do so. And lastly, please check out the new channel that we've launched, Sports Cards Live Clips. Basically taking some highlights from each episode, releasing them one per day in more digestible, shorter form. So you can check those out. Please go subscribe to that channel. The, the link is in the description to this video right now. As always, everybody, your comments, your questions are in play. Let's get to tonight's guest. He got his first taste of cardboard when he was caddying to make money to spend on packs in the early 90s. He never quit collecting all the way through and launched his new company, Slab Strong, in May of 2021. His favorite teams are the Minnesota Timberwolves, Atlanta Braves, and the Atlanta Falcons, as well as the Boston Bruins. But his all-time favorite, he made me say this, Providence College, which he is very, very passionate about. His favorite athletes are Chipper Jones and Deion Sanders, originally from and currently hailing from Providence, Rhode Island. Let's bring him out. Tim McHenry, welcome to Sports Cards Live. How are you doing tonight? I'm great. I got to tell you, I'm glad you had me off screen because I love your intro and I had the dance moves going, but I truly can't dance. So was, I would have been embarrassed. So thank you for bringing me on after. That was great. You're welcome. And, you know, I can see you while you're in the back room and I saw you down there doing the jig and I'm like, good thing he's not on screen right now. <laughs> I'm just bugging you. I'm just bugging you. So, Tim, first of all, welcome to the show. It's great to have you. We've been talking about this for a while. We've known each other for a bit, mostly through Clubhouse, but had the chance to meet you at the national last august which was awesome and uh now this weekend right now i mean i i commented earlier but everybody out there who's watching you can tell that those are hotel room curtains behind him tim is right now in dallas at the dallas card show so let's talk about that i mean what's the vibe been like there tell us a little bit about what's going on at the show this weekend so far yeah um it's been great so it's not as busy and it, and it makes sense, right? It's not as busy as the one that was right before the national, but I feel like, so I've been to a few here now and it's definitely a steady flow. Um, 
it was a great atmosphere. I know that the past two nights, trade night has gone to like four in the morning, like usual. Uh, I haven't necessarily seen any big deals being made, but I've seen some amazing cards in people's in people's cases. I saw a a patch auto Jackie Robinson, which was unbelievable, wow. and um, some big hockey cards too, actually. And yeah, I would say real steady flow. There's definitely deals being made every time I walk by a table. There's stuff off. So this there's people buying, there's people trading. Um, great show. A lot of fun. what's the like? What's the mood like? Are people are people happy? Are they still are they still bullish on the hobby? Are they excited? Is there any fatigue that you're noticing from people? What would you say like the the general mood of the room is? So I think so. Two a combination of two things. You already mentioned it. The Mint Collective was canceled. So the next. Uh, postponed, yes, uh, on March 25th, um, which is my first table. I have my first table at the Mint Collective. So with that being said, with that postponed, the next biggest show that was going to happen was uh, I'll, I'll be in Atlanta for the Culture Collision show. And then I started to talk about, to all the guys, and they're like, they got so excited because they can come to they can come to Dallas. Like a, a lot of people were, gonna, were picking one or the other, you know, just money-wise, travel-wise. But, yeah, there's definitely that rush. And, and no, I think that – Everyone has been real positive. I sense no, uh, like it's not going down. It's definitely picking back up. We know around the holiday season, you know, card sales can go down. People are spending extra money on presents, but absolutely it's, it's back. Like this is a, it was a great show. Okay. okay. Is, is it on tomorrow too? Yeah, I won't be there. I'm flying out tomorrow morning, but yeah, tomorrow's the last day. But after the show, you're going to go to the trade to one of the trade nights or the trade night at one of the hotels. Yeah. So they always have like it's funny, right? Because the security will say, you know, guys, time to pack up. But everyone just moves to the lobby and they stay there till four in the morning. So, yeah, after this, I'm going to go head back and just just hang with the guys, you know, have a good time. I really don't have much to trade, but it's fun to be around these big guys and seeing these big cards because sometimes you just see stuff you'll never see again. I, I was happy when you just said that there are even some nice hockey cards in the room because uh, I, I think I heard in the past that there was very few uh, at, at past Dallas shows. I'm going to try to get to a Dallas show. I was thinking maybe March, but we'll see. I seem to keep on uh, pushing it out a bit further, but I will get to a Dallas show one of these days. I I, I really can't wait. I think it's going to be a, a great time. So looking forward to that. Yeah, you would have. So you would have done OK today. I so I come I'm from New England, Providence, uh, Rhode Island, and we're it, as you know, right now we're getting hit with a, a storm and it's very cold. 35 degrees in Dallas today. The wind was like hurricane gusts. Um, yeah, so you might have enjoyed it, but I was expecting to come down and maybe get a tan. Not the case. Yeah, I can I can handle that kind of weather considering where I'm from and what the and the, the cold spell that we just went through here uh, over the past few weeks. Let, okay, I want to get into a little bit. I want to learn about you. I want the audience to learn more about you. I mean, we're obviously we're going to talk about Slab Strong, which is your your business, your product that you've developed and you've you've launched to the hobby. But I want the audience to get to know you, uh, Tim, a little bit better first. But before we do that, let's say hello to the crew. We got Bush fifty one hundred four, who's looking for Brian Gray. Troy's collect. Troy is in the house. Good evening, Troy. Always great to have you. We got Rip Pack and Slab in the house. Slab strong, don't slab wrong. I love it. What's up to the RPS crew? We got, she blinded me with refractors. Mr. Andy, good evening to you. Daniel Busby in the house. Jake Dahl in the house again. Great to have you. BT Sports Cards. Jose Prada, Proto, Prado. It's slab business. Slab business. It is slab business. John G, what is up? What is up? Jerry Hodge, good evening. Pepino Man in the house. I got to meet Pepino Man at the National last year as well game time gallery always exciting news in the hobby coin and stamp collectors can't say that that's a good point i mean there has been this this past week we we had some news that's for sure there are a few big big uh occurrences let's say jeff hart great to have you have you thanks for joining there's brian gray good evening bg always good to see you abdiel good to have you we got the i could see now we got the clubhouse crew in the room eric's here you and Eric could could kind of you could do voiceovers for each other. You both both have that thick northeastern accent. Colin Murray, what's going on? Anthony George, what's up? Bad time. Oh, you got to watch the football game. Go watch the football game. You can catch this in re in uh, in replays. Corey Carr, hello all. <laughs> Just kidding. Hello Corey. Good evening to you. Anthony reminds everybody to hit that like button. Appreciate that, Anthony. Appreciate that a lot. Or hit any button. Click something, guys. Click something. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. 
Charles Fuchs says, I heard there was lots of Marvel PMGs at the Dallas card show. Let's yeah. What, what, how, how prevalent was that Tim uh, from what you saw today? So I definitely saw a few PMGs. I uh, believe there was a, I believe there was like a Hulk and there was a red and a green. I could be wrong. I want to say that, but there was a, tons of Marvel stuff in general. Not everything was the PMGs, but there's a ton of Marvel stuff. I think that, you know, so I'm, I am a more of a sports collector, but I love the the non-sports stuff. So I'm definitely one of the guys that from everything from like even the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle cards and all this new stuff. So, yeah, I think Marvel's going to going to kill it and you'll see those prices. But yeah, the PMGs are crazy. Anytime I saw one, but one guy had a Hulk, two Hulks and I didn't even attempt to look at the price, but yeah. it, it was still cool to see. Very cool. Very cool. Daniel, good evening to you. Hits and chicks says Tim for president. There you go, Tim. There you go. There's a show your slabs. I'm guessing that is Corey says pretty sure the DNA hit parade guys bought all the bought it all. Oh, good for them. Good for them. Albert Jones. Good evening to you. Fact sakes. Welcome to the show. First time. Great to have you. Great to have you. And Troy's collectible says big news in the hobby, especially if you want a free gold kaboom. Trevor Lawrence. Not. Yes, exactly what I was referring to in the intro. All right, man. So listen, I mean, let's get to know you a little bit. Uh, and and you mentioned to me that, you know, you were caddying when you were younger. You'd caddy, you'd make some money caddying, and you would spend that money on packs. And then you ended up caddying for some people who you may or may not have some cards of. Who are some of the, some of the people that you kind of got to caddy for? And were you even aware that you that of who they were at the time? So, yeah. So I my brother was actually what they call like a caddy master, right? So he was the, essentially the boss. And so I could go to him. We used to have the Brad Faxon and Billy Android celebrity tournament about 10 minutes from my house. And so I would go there and I would literally beg my brother, like, give me one of these guys. So I caddied for Keith Byers, one of my all time favorite players. And also it was Ray Allen. And then so for whatever reason, they made a mistake and they put two celebrities in the same group, which is not normal. It's usually one celebrity per group. And so now I'm riding with these guys and um, listen, I'm not a hockey guy. I can't skate. So I just never really truly like I can play basketball. I played soccer so I could follow it better. Right. With hockey, because I didn't play, it was hard to understand. So the next thing, you know, you know, I'm telling people who I caddied for and they're like, you don't know who that is. So I ended up caddying for Ron Francis and Ted Donato at the same time. Awesome guys, great people, but I had no clue who they really were. Come to find out, um, Ron Francis is like an all time great, right? He's killer. And then Ted Donato, I know was a Bruin after that. And I, I believe his son made it to the league recently and even played for the Bruins. But it was amazing because I got his like, I think you would know this, right? The hockey guys are the most humble. I've heard and that. Without me, without me knowing their names, I never would have known who they were, but they were awesome. Ron Francis was a real good guy. And I believe like I said, I don't know much, but I believe he was, this is after he retired, but he was a big uh, sh- San Jose shark, right? Uh, he was a, he was a big pit Hartford whaler, Pittsburgh penguin, oh, Carolina yeah. hurricane. Yeah. Yeah. And now he's the general manager of the new team in Seattle, the Kraken, which is pretty cool. Maybe I should see if he remembers me. Try to get yeah. a free ticket. There, there you go. On. There you go. Yeah. So now you, you collected all the way through, but what I liked about your story, you know, a lot of us collect because we're collectors, but one thing that you mentioned to me the other day that I found interesting was that the reason or what kept you in the hobby was that a player would come along that you were a fan of, and then you'd go search out their cards. Can you co- sort of elaborate on, on that and what players those were and, and, and what it was like to be kind of, you know, within the hobby or, or not not able to leave the hobby because of another player would come along and like okay i like this player i want to collect his cards i i think you know i don't know that that's that, that i've heard that story many times before where you're in the hobby and then you might be sort of slowing down but then a new player comes in who you like because you followed them in college and now you're going to collect their cards so because yeah. of that you you keep on uh kind of being able to stay on top of things even if it's a little bit more casual but speak about that a bit and who are the players that kept you active Sure. So as you said, I'm from Providence, Rhode Island, where the smallest state in the United States. So I think maybe it's maybe the Napoleon complex to where I have so much pride in my area that that's part of my PC. So, uh, you know, Providence College, you mentioned it. They're in the Big East. So every year I get to see great talent coming through 
And there's always one or two guys every two or three years that makes the league from Providence. So now I have to get all their cards, right? But it's, it's more than just that. So like Rocco Bodelli, he played for, uh, he's now the coach of the Twins uh, in baseball. He played for the Tampa Bay Rays. He's from Rhode Island. Even though we went to separate high schools and technically we're rivals, he's a Rhode Island guy, right? Um, another guy named Will Blackman, who ended up being a great corner. He's from a different city from me, but is still a Rhode Island guy. So there was always someone in some sport that would make it to the league, and I just had to have everything Rhode Island. And that includes, despite me being a massive Providence College fan, even URI, even the University of Rhode Island, who is our rival. Um, but yeah, it's a beautiful thing. And uh, we actually just saw my biggest pro uh, collection right now is a guy named David Duke Jr., who was actually from Providence, grew up 10 minutes from me, and now is now on the new uh, Brooklyn Nets. So, yeah, it's just uh, I, I think it has a lot to do with just state pride and us being the smallest state. And I just have a I just have a lot of pride from where I'm from. And so you so you, you collect for players, but you also collect because of brands, as you mentioned. So. Uh, for example, Fleer Metal. You you like you like Fleer Metal. Has yeah. has your has your appreciation for that brand from the '90s caused you to collect hockey cards now? Because you know Upper Deck just brought back. They're calling it Skybox Metal. Came out for the first time a few months ago. They're going to bring it out again. Are are you collecting some hockey cards because of the brand? Like I guess it's it's a you know it's one thing we collect players we like, and then I find at least you know well not myself. I think a lot of people. You know, you might collect one brand every year. And if that if that brand takes a break and doesn't come out for a few years or even 20, <laughs> or do you get back into it? So, what? How you know, when, when, when Upper Deck announced it or they they released the new Skybox Metal, what, how did you re respond? Did you collect some of that? Oh, yeah. So when I heard, I believe, um, you know, one of our guys from Clubhouse who uh, works at Upper Deck was telling us it was coming out. And I was like, stop, stop the breaks. Like, what do you mean? It, metal universe is coming back out so yeah absolutely so like i said before not a big hobby guy but it actually brought me now i'm collecting hockey because i bought um, a few blaster boxes of the new the metal and i just think that you know in the 90s there was so much design to these cards that it just lives in me plus that's my wheelhouse right 1992 i'm 10 years old that all the way up to like 98, right? So this is when I'm getting a little bit older. I have a little bit more money from the caddy and I can buy things. So the metal universe is actually one of my favorite. You get, you got the flare showcase. Um, even like, I know Brian Gray's hair, uh, just to go back for a second. There's not a lot of guys from Rhode Island that make the league and have cards. And Leaf is one of the brands that you can get like a quitty pay from Providence who's on the cults now. And, and, and it's affordable. And so when the brands come out, it really took me back to when I was a youth. And I absolutely, I, I didn't care what it was, but I'm glad it was hockey because now I can start learning more about it. But absolutely, man, I, it's just, uh, it really truly brought me back to when I was a kid. Yeah, that's cool, man. It, it, we do have brand loyalty. I, I refer to it often brand equity. You know, certain cards are just, or cert, certain, especially these days where a player can have, you know, <laughs> Uh, well upwards of 20 rookie cards in a year and with you know of those 20 which ones are important you always find people asking that if they're coming into the hobby i often get dms saying you know i want to get into hockey what rookie card what sets should i be focusing on and i've got i've got the ones that i would always refer people to and uh it seems like you know those are ones that that have brand equity you feel like they're going to be remembered for a long time and i think metal certainly has equity uh within within our hobby no doubt about that uh, your buddy Corey jumps in, says that Tim's got super sports knowledge, especially basketball, super sports knowledge. Awesome. And uh, Game Time Gallery said, I was at I was at Silicon Valley show today as there was a lot and there was a lot of Marvel, but only saw one PMG. So maybe the PMG, the Marvel PMGs are starting to get locked into collections. Who knows? We tend to see them. Uh, I see them a lot on Instagram. People taking yeah. screenshots of eBay and showing what's going on. So uh Cool stuff. Thank you, Game Time Gallery. Hope you had a good time at the show. So I want to ask you this too. Um, your fiance. So you're starting a new business. You know, it's not always easy. Talk a bit about your fiance, uh, Nikki, and just how supportive she's been. Yeah, absolutely. So I honestly don't know if I would even... It's tough, right? So we're having a tough situation. The pandemic hits. I lose my job. 
at that point we were still getting, you know, I was getting unemployment plus there was that extra $600 a month that was coming. So we weren't feeling it yet. Right. We weren't feeling the pandemic. So I decide to ask her to marry me on July 31st uh, of 2020. And two hours later, I went to the bathroom. I walk out, she's on the ground. She tripped over her own feet and spiral fractured her ankle in three places. So at that point, you know, I can't even go to the, with the hospital because the pandemic was happening. Now I had had the idea for this, but when something like that happens to where now she loses her form of income, she, she's sitting next to me on a couch for three months. Uh, I, I make one out of it with a cricket and I, and I had a talk with her. I said, listen, this, you know, I love you. You love me. This could be very tough. We could really be tough for this year if I go for this, because we're going to, there's going to be money spent, right? You have to do R and D and all this, the, my, the provisional so, path. So, so, so now you're, you're talking about jumping in, starting the starting slab strong and, and, uh, and how you're already, you're already making those decisions right then and there with her. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. And so she, I literally, it was almost like she expected it. Right. Cause I said, we had a conversation. This could be very tough. You know, we're going to, we're going to grind it out. We, we're not living in the best area of Providence right now. I really wanted to get us out of there and she's all, she's all for it. And then the most beautiful thing is her parents are all for it. Right. Cause you, you know, I, I want to be a man, right. We want to start a family. And to have the support from not only her, but her parents and my parents too, and my brother was just like the best feeling. And that's truly when the motivation started where we got nothing to lose. Let's go for it. If, if you have my back, you know, wherever we are, as long as we're together, it's love. Right. So that stress just went off my back, but, but she really means it too. Like she wasn't faking it. Like she's, we're grinding it right now. And it's just been, I couldn't ask for anything more from her, honestly. Yeah, it's uh, you're fortunate to have a good woman in your life who's there to uh, to support you, especially when you're going to embark upon the entrepreneurial journey with not a ton of resources to uh, to keep you afloat, right? So that's uh, that's super important. So you know, kudos to her and congratulations to you on that. So let's talk about Slab Strong. You're wearing the hat. You're uh, you know you've got your logo. I love it. Your, your, your face is becoming very recognizable in the hobby because you've done some cool marketing, uh, out there. Let's, uh, what I want to know is though, how did you, how did you, or what's the story behind you identifying the need for a product like Slab Strong? Where, where were you when, when you had the idea to create this holder? And then we'll explain to the audience what it is exactly. But what was the, what, what, what was the, the root cause? What was the catalyst for this idea? <clears throat> Well, in the beginning, I just wanted to simplify it. I wanted to make slabs look cooler. And what I mean by that is, so we all have our, um, <clears throat> we all have our personal collection, right? Maybe, maybe you have a rookie Jordan. I have a rookie Jordan, but I said to myself, wouldn't it be cool if we could somehow change the color of slab? Maybe I want my blue frame around the red. Maybe you want red around. So it started off with simply just color changing. Like I took a screw down, which is about the same size as a PSA slab. And I made it with cricket uh, stickers. And I was like, okay, this looks cool. I can see what's happening here. And then when you start looking at what happened with the value of cards, I said to myself, well, the next step is the brand of grading company is actually important now because now you have different monetary values, right? So once I 3d printed my first case, I said, oh, oh, it works, right? It looks good, but it was too brittle. I had done a few tests. It just, it wasn't protective. It looked cool, but it wasn't protective. And then, so I went to injection molding and uh, it just, I, that was when like, okay, now it works. Now I can really test it. Now I start talking to my manufacturer. What can we do? What kind of colors can we make? And it's just been off to the races since then. And so, I mean, I find it interesting that the, the, the initial idea was actually more of an aesthetic thing than a protecting the protecting it. Cause now you, I think you, your, your tagline is defend your slabs, right? Right. So now it's more about protecting the, the slab itself. And, you know, so, so it doesn't fall off a table and crack, which has happened to probably most of us. Is that, 
So how, at what point did you realize that, hey, this isn't just about aesthetics or dressing up the card. It's now about, it's now, it's now a safety feature. So that's actually a kind of a funny story. So I have, I have a, a patent. And so when I first go to my patent attorney, he tells me, you don't have a design patent. And I take offense to that because I, I don't understand, right? I'm not a lawyer. I don't get it. I said, what do you mean? Like I designed it. It looks great. And he was like, it's okay. Calm down. You have a utility patent for the functionality of grading slaves. And that's when it really hit me that this is a new product to the industry. And then I can really do something with it because once you get to the utility part of the patent, the, the actual design doesn't matter as long as the end game is the same. So I never intended to, for it to be a protective device that, you know, it went from making it look cool to once I made, once I encased it and I started dropping it, I was like, well, that's, this is it. This is what I can do now. So that, did you drop it by accident or did you drop it on purpose? Uh, no, I dropped it on purpose. I did a few things. I, I boiled it. I fried it in a frying pan. Like I was making dumb videos. So I was like frying it. I boiled it. I put it in my fridge. I threw it off my second floor balcony. Uh, I stood on it. Um, yeah, I just was having a lot of fun. And I was trying to show that it worked, not realizing, and I know we're going to talk about it, but not realizing it's the best way to sell it. With I don't have to say anything. I can just throw it at you. Literally yeah. just throw it at you. Just so okay so you have the idea you may you do your first copy 3d printing too brittle you go to injection molding you get your first sample you put it on the card or on the slab and then you start experimenting with just how durable this holder is going to be what's your next move after you realize that you were onto something what was the next move you made well i started reaching out to people right because you can have the best idea in the world. I could have my, my patent pending, all this great stuff. But if no one ever knows about it, like I could have been wrong, right? I know I loved it, but it's my baby, right? I, you know, I'm going to love it regardless. I had to start showing people. And I just got so much love from guys like Peter Pacman, from my guy, Renee from Storage Wars, my guy, Marlon Wells out in California, one of my local card shops. So I'm like, okay, there's the motivation. And then I see my friend Corey from show your slabs i start seeing his ads and i say to myself that's a really cool product i want this guy to know who i am and i want to know if he thinks my product is cool that was like how i was going to judge it right because he's in the he's in the industry already i ended up just sending him a facebook message and he said i, I love it do you want to meet up i think it was a few days later it might have been the next week but i drove down six hours to baltimore and so I'm showing him and I tell him that I have this way to prove that it works by throwing it. Now, I, have, I never threw it in front of anybody at that point. He has a second floor deck and he says, do you want to go throw it? And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, oh, no, like what if something happens? But it all worked out. I went to the second floor. He stayed down at the bottom. I threw it at his feet. And we've been honestly, real. I mean, best friends, real good friends since that moment. So, okay, so your next move is to reach out to people. You reach out to Corey, and 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 then what? I mean, because we're now at a point where you've got an actual business. You've got, you know, you've you've got a website. You you're, you're fulfilling orders. You're you got manufacturing going on. But I want to I want to I want to kind of go from right through step by step. So you you reach out to Corey. You test it. You become pals with him. And I'm I'm guessing he's is is he a bit of a mentor to you as well? Uh, maybe we should use the word mental, but yeah, you can say he's a mentor. You can say <laughs> that, but yeah. So he's just, he's a smart guy and he was already like the stuff you see him doing. He was doing that himself at first. Like now he has CNC machines and all that, but he's just like, he does a lot of stuff with his hands. So I kind of envied that because I was like, how do I make this thing? Right. I had to send it off to someone. Um, so yeah. So but then what happens with him? He says, hey, man, you should come down to Dallas with me on May 20th and you can sit at my table and you can have a table with me. You just hang out with me. And I don't think I was going to come to Dallas. So I, I always tell Corey, um, he he really pushed me because he was like, hey, come to my table. And that's truly when the whole marketing strategy started. 
because I ran into uh, Ryan Johnson, Card Collector 2. I threw it at him. He was actually the first person I threw it at and put me on his YouTube channel. And then, um, uh, to be honest, at the time, I did not know Jeff's real name. I knew he was a sports card investor. And I just looked at my uh, my girl, Nikki, and said, I'm going to go throw it at the sports card investor. And so this is this is day one. At, this is my, my business opens May 20th. By two o'clock on May 20th, I start throwing it at people. And so I had walked up to Jeff and just started spewing my pitch. And he went to reach for the, the slabs in my hand and I just threw it at his feet. And uh, how, did just, you, how, how, how does how does he respond when you throw it at his feet? He, was he, he wasn't expecting that, I'm guessing. He, that's what exactly what he said. He had no clue. Like I came out of like I just came out of the blue and was like, I'm Tim, this and that throw it at his feet. He steps back just this. He, goes, he says, I wasn't expecting that. We made, I honestly, at that point, now I'm just, my energy's pumping. So I don't remember what was said. I do remember him saying, Hey, email me. And the problem with when you say to someone, email me. So his name is Jeff. I didn't know he spelt it the way he spelt it. So I had to figure out how to now get in touch with him. Right. Um, yeah. So, and then he told me to email him, uh, but, but at that point, right, I wasn't, I was not looking for investment from, from anyone. I just wanted, it was simple. I just wanted people to know who I was and what my product was and that I was coming. And, uh, it's, it's been working to this day still. So. All right. We'll get into that a bit more. Go to a couple of comments here. Michael Ham joins Michael. What's going on? He goes out, he, he's talking to you. I spoke to you at the national at the Tampa table. And about the upgrade, and we call it the hammy. Oh, you may. Do you remember I, Michael? Yeah, I do. Yes, good I dude. Really good, like good dude for sure. Yeah, Corey. Uh, Corey jumps in, and says both, both uh, mentor and mental. I think is what he was uh, getting at there. Getting it. Joe Perot says throwing is not a metaphor. Throwing is not a metaphor. Uh, and and he uh, Corey says, yeah, that was completely Tim's genius. I thought he might be nuts, but it was the greatest thing he could have done. He's talking about throwing it at people yeah. like Ryan Card Collector 2, Jeff Wilson from Sports Card Investor. So that's uh that that's 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 pretty funny. So you're out, you're throwing it at people, and and you mentioned that Jeff said email me. So why did you weren't looking for investors, but Jeff wanted to get involved? What was the what was the impetus for him to ask you to email him? So, you know, I didn't know at that point. I don't know. Right. Um, but in my mind, I've been a restaurant manager my whole life. I guess I know how to run someone else's business. But, you know, you don't know what you don't know. Right. So now I'm running my own business. Now I don't have a boss. And so I didn't I never emailed him for an investment at first. I simply I wrote a message to him and said honest advice in the um, the subject line. And may, maybe he thought that he might want to invest, but we never talked about it. So for him to give me his time, I think it was like two days later after I emailed him, he said, hey, 2.30, we'll have a meeting. Talk to him. I think we talked for like 45 minutes and and then things kept progressing from there. But yeah, it's just a, it's just a beautiful thing because he took his time out just to, to talk to a guy that truly just had an idea and I was in Dallas. When I left Dallas, I had $800, $800 told to my name, like no savings, nothing. And because I had, you know, spent all my money on the patent and on the prototypes. And so now I'm leaving Dallas with this feeling like I can really do this. Like this is a thing that people haven't seen before. And it's like I said, it's been amazing ever since. Right on, right on. Well, let, let's keep talking about the the Jeff Wilson uh, thread here because so what's where are things at now? Like, so you reached out to him and you guys uh, had a conversation. What uh, what happened next? Yeah, so part of that email where I say I need honest advice is because I got a buyout offer, and when I tell you I had eight hundred dollars to my name, when you get a buyout offer, you just have a dollar amount, and it's like wow, like. I can do so much with that when realistically I didn't know about uh, income tax like or capital gains tax. I wasn't aware what it meant to give up everything. And so I'm glad I didn't. And the guys that um, made me an offer, they're still great guys. How, how did you? Okay. So I missed the part where 
how did you get a buyout offer? Like, did you, th- did someone, you threw it at someone at the Dallas show and they, and they offered to buy it out? Where did, where did this buyout offer come from? So I actually, so before Dallas, I did one other thing, like how I went to go see Corey just by a, a message right around the time that my prototype came out for PSA HGA had la- HGA had launched and the CEO Tyler just seemed like a guy that was available, right? You could talk to him. I sent him a message. I didn't even tell, tell him what it was. I didn't send a picture. I said, I have something for you. Little did I know he responded with, if you come down to Knoxville, I'll give you some time. So I think three days later, I drove 14 hours straight to Knoxville. He en- invited me to his house. I didn't even have an HGA prototype at that time. I laid out in front of him my my BGS and my PSA one, but Tyler being a forward thinker, he just got it. And so he was my first. Okay, so that's when it got crazy, right? Because the whole dream is imagine if the grading companies will sell them. And so he gave me a chance. Um, his business development guy, TJ, who's one of my guys, and, and we became kind of friends, you know, as much as you become, can become friends in this situation. So he's always had my back. I'm, I'm, he might be watching now, but he was saying something earlier. Um, yeah, but it, it was wild because all of a sudden the CEO and owner of a grading company is going, yes, I, I see your idea and I see what it could be and I want in. Um, and then I actually had this connection to one of the guys at PSA. And through that connection, I sent an email with a picture he uh, passed it on to Steve Sloan, who is the president now, the president of Collectors Universe. And I got an email from his personal assistant. Hey, Tim, we love it. We'd like to buy some. Now think now it's like, hold on a second. PSA is contacting me to buy some. So they ended up purchasing 300 of them and they were giving them away at the national. And it went very well. And I don't want to say, but things are going very well with them. And so that's when all of a sudden now two grading companies are accepting of the product. And it just, it started snowballing to like so much support from everyone. That must've been awesome for you. I mean, in terms yeah. of your motivation and, and a sigh of relief as well, I guess, to think that, okay, it's not just me, that the, the grading companies like this, and I'm making this to, to, to outfit their, their product. I mean, how, how, how great did that feel? Yeah, because it's 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 recognition, right? It, it, it almost I didn't have any sales at that point, right? I just launched. I only the crazy part about this whole scenario is when I went down on May 20th to launch my company, I had 13 total black bumper cases, individual. I gave eight away, I kept five so I could throw my product, but there was just so much love given to me. But yeah, for PSA to recognize it and to actually spend money with me, it was it's the dream. It's the dream. So, so Tyler, who's the president of HGA, you go to his house, you meet with him. And then you mentioned that. So you, you sent Jeff Wilson an email saying honest advice. You were looking for some business advice because you don't know what you don't know. And were you looking for advice on what had gone on with Tyler from HGA? Yeah. So I broke it down to him. I said, you know, look, I'm getting this buyout offer, but I also have an order from PSA, which is the king, right? When there's no denying PSA is the king. So now it's like, cause it's like, I need money, right? I need the actual money. And when you're so young in a product for someone to do it. So yeah, it was exciting, but then weeks go by. So we were talking for, for like weeks at this point and man, I'm just so glad nothing against those guys. Cause those guys are great. I still talk to them. Everyone's per it's awesome. But I didn't, I just didn't give up on myself. I could have took the easy way out and took the money. Um, but to be honest with you, part of the motivation is after losing my job is to never work for someone again. Cause now I can control my own destiny. And, uh, so all that culminated was getting advice from Jeff and him, him and him enjoying the product. Like I knew once these people started telling me once PSA, once Jeff. And so what Jeff said to me was, the, the thing that was the aha moment was he said, Tim, do you want to work for somebody or do you want to be an entrepreneur? I said, I want to be an entrepreneur. He was like, perfect. 
let's talk about an investment. And then when he said that, I'm just like, well, I mean, perfect, right? Like, well, I don't know. Now I'm like, now I really don't know what to do. Cause now I have a, now I have a partner who's uh, like big time in the hobby, the most eyes on him in terms of um, like social media. I knew he was out there and yeah, I can't say enough how good he's, how good he's been to me because part of the, uh, our deal together and I'm still the majority owner because he recognized that I, I you know, I want to make something of myself was he's let me be me. Right. I know I'm the majority owner, so I don't have to say he let me, but I go to him for advice. Right. We're, we're equal in my eyes. Right. I'm not going to I'm going to take advice from him. Right. And he's just let me be me. Now, he's definitely made some, some suggestions on like packaging and some really smart things. Right. But he has just continued to. Tim, just keep doing what you're doing. I'll help you take care of the back end, but just keep getting out there and keep pitching the way you're pitching. Yeah. So. Great stories, man. I love it. And you know, in my uh, in the in the description for this episode, I referred to you as inspirational, and it, it's because of what you just what you just said. You know, you uh, you didn't want you 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 wanted to you believed in yourself. You wanted to keep going. You had the opportunity to sell this idea, put some money in the bank, and probably coast for a little while. Maybe I don't you know don't know how much it was, but probably enough to coast for a year or so, or maybe two, whatever it was. But you you turned that down, and you and you took the risk, and I think that I think that is so inspiring for everybody to hear. Um, and you know, I'm like, I want to just take a second to let if you're watching this right now or listening, slabstrong.com, slabstrong.com. It's in the ticker right now. Like, how can I not say to people, go to the website, order order something, just order something from Tim. If you have a, a PSA, a BGS. Uh, do you, so you, your 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 product fits PSA, BGS, HGA. Yeah. So I I always made PSA first. Once I got the meeting with Tyler because he was he loved it. So I made I technically made HGA second, but I always had plans for BGS, and I can finally say I'm doing. So I just picked them up uh, honestly right before I came to Dallas. So I'm still doing some quality checks to make sure because it's built a little bit different. The corners are squared. I want to make sure it still works. But you can see them right here. Wait, where am I pointing? Right there in the background. Um, but so I've done a lot of as much market research as I can, but in person, right? So with BGS, I'm making black and clear at the moment only because I feel like it's a different uh, customer base, right? Whereas PSA has multiple, multiple colors at the moment, just because there's so many cards graded with them. And then, so yeah, and I'll be doing SGC and CSG next. Okay, great. Listen, I'm going to go back to what I was saying. Let's go to this website, guys. Let's let's just support Tim. Let's support, and, and just for so everybody knows, no no kickbacks here, no, uh, no referral codes, nothing like that for me, for Sports Cards Live. This is all for Tim. Let's go help this guy out. He's building a business in the hobby. And uh, and I just want us all to support him. So let's go to a couple of comments just while we're while we're getting all uh, all emotional here, if you will. Eric, uh, who I said you know has the same accent that you. We all like and support Tim because he is real and honest and personable. He makes you like him, even if it's against your will. This is going to carry him far in this hobby. That's great. That's that's a nice comment. Joe Perot says inspiring and instructional story. Tim is as real as it gets. Jose Prado says Tim is very authentic. Pepino Man says that I hope they fit my PIG slabs. And uh, and Troy says SGC, which you did address. So, yes, SGC for sure. So, okay. So, right now, because I was going to ask you, how did you fund this? And I guess your funding did come in the form of Jeff Wilson, sports card investor. He is your, he is your, your, your main partner and is helping you kind of get through these early days where cash is king and you need cash to keep on going and until the sales start to kind of cover that off for it, it themselves is that is that fair to say yeah i do want to say yes absolutely but i do want to say so in the beginning um I, well i had less than 800 dollars in the beginning so i'm when i left dallas i had 800 um so in the very beginning my brother actually uh let me borrow 400 dollars um to add on so I could start the search for the provisional patent. So my brother was a big supporter. He lent me money. 
And then um, he's kind of a private guy, so I won't say his name, but I had a really good friend from high school, a couple, honestly, a couple really good friends from high school that believed in me. You know, one gave me his office space rent free. Right. So that got me out of the house and able to like kind of clear my mind from changing from house to business. And then another friend of mine, I was still I had nothing. And uh, he gave me a personal loan to uh, actually pay for the provisional patent. And um, yeah, I, I just had a, a, you know two close friends support me with no they didn't ask for any um, equity or anything. They were simply just supporting me. Yeah. So I had to shout a couple of guys out. I don't want to say their names just because if they're private, but I, I've had a few people that have really helped me. You mentioned that when you did your deal with Jeff, that uh, that you maintain majority of the company. And and I think you sort of insinuated that that, that either Jeff wanted it that way or because, you know, he or, yeah, or he or he encouraged you. And I think part of that is, you know, he he as an investor, he wants you incentivized. And the more you have at stake, uh, the more incentivized you'll be. So I think that was a good move by by both of you. Richard Turner says, a cool story. Love the fact that you didn't give up early and believed in yourself. Good luck in the future. I just come back to the description I wrote for this for this episode was the inspirational, uh, Tim. And and so I'm, yeah, obviously I'm not the only one that feels that way, which is nice to see. Ta what were some of the other chat? What are some of the challenges that you've encountered along the way, uh, just in terms of the, you're smirking, so I, I guess you have an answer. Talk about yeah. some of the challenges that you've encountered. And the reason I asked the question is, number one, to get to know you and your journey a little bit better, but also for anybody watching or listening who may be thinking about starting a company themselves and what they might be, uh, what they might have in store for themselves. Sure. And it's like, so I'll tell you what, social media is a gem, right? I mean, you know this, right? You could say a hundred, hundred right things in a row. You say that one wrong thing and they're going to get on you. So my, when I first launched it, a lot of people would go, oh, you're going to make a case for a case and, and all this. And it's, so I used to always joke back because I'm not a sensitive guy, right? I know 100% of the market isn't going to buy my product. Um, I know not everyone's going to like it. Some people like the bags, which I, I can't compete with, right? They're so inexpensive. But that's not the point. The point was it's something new coming into the hobby. And there's some, some you know, I don't want to say older generation, but there's some guys that are just the, the bags are the bags and that's it, right? And then there's some some younger guys coming up to where it's like you know they're buying um all these hollows and all these uh nice colors and now all these other grading companies are coming out with custom colors so like there's a, that but both groups have shown me love and i it's unbelievable um but so in terms of just don't give up like you never you never know i, I Look, I've been through anxious moments, depressed moments. Is this going to work? You know, um, when I got my first sale, it's like, okay, awesome. I, my, when I first opened up, like, I think I, hit, I had 13 sales my first day and then a few the next day and then a couple of days with no sales. And it's like, oh my God, what's happening, right? But that's just not the reality of like, no one knew me at that point. I had 400 followers on Instagram. Um, I had just launched my website under Shopify. And just no one had heard from me and, and the product was brand new no one has seen anything like it and uh yeah so but i have never gotten anything in person it's always like social media that makes that jokes like what about a, a case for a case and why would i need to protect a card that's already there or or when you throw the card do you know that the card's being damaged on the inside and now uh i should say this i do not want people throwing their cards i do it to show my product works I am only throwing my cards, my car. I think my most expensive slab is $35, um, but it's probably it's Rhode Island stuff. So that's the stuff I use. I do not suggest, and I would never, if you meet me and you allow me to put my case on your slab, I promise I will not throw it unless you tell me to. Um, but no, it's been amazing. But that's the only thing I've really got is really social media because in person, Maybe you're not going to buy the product, but I'm pretty easy to talk to. I like to have a lot of fun. So usually I can kind of win over some sales, but just they're just going to give me a chance type of thing. Well, you know, you, I the question was, you know, what are some of the challenges? And oh. and and you no, know, and, and you mentioned that social media, you know, people kind of people like to come at others and say, you know, well, so you oh, so you're making a case for a case, right? But but couple things like number one, 
there is a there is a utility to the product. And, and the other thing is a lot of people who are saying that aren't they're not starting businesses themselves. So, you know, it, it and you like you said, you, you're not you're not sensitive to that. So that's good. That will thick skin will take you a long way. Yeah. Your social media strategy, though, I mean, I mentioned before that your face is kind of recognizable now. Uh, you've got a lot of followers on Instagram, well over 5000 now. And um, and you do these little uh, I don't I think they're called pinatas. Is that right? Where you, you you've yeah. kind of found this unique um, way to make a post. And uh, so talk a bit about that and, and how that's worked for you. Well, the easiest way to not spend money is to is to take all the free stuff around you and use that to your advantage. So, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, as memes became more and more popular, one of the first strategies I talked to, and I actually talked to uh, Nikki's father about it, and I was like, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take stuff that's in the news or more recent stories and just literally Photoshop my, my product in it or Photoshop my face in it just to kind of like get people to look. And then I found this app called Pinata Farms, which is video memes. And I've just had so much fun with it. And, you know, this whole process, even throwing the slab, I'm doing the stuff that I like and I'm, and it, hopefully my energy, people like it. So I sit at home, I'm laughing to myself. Like I'm sitting there giggling to myself. So some of the stupid stuff I do, but it's and then i started having people uh like uh, a, a, re a real great collector in the tcg world uh laura don diego trading she uh was one of them that sent me a message like hey i'm waiting for my meme and i'm like oh okay i make one right away for her so it's been fun to have people be like hey put me in one of your memes or uh or, or i love um how you're doing it because it's it's free man and that's the greatest part about social media is you can build a following with very little money. I, I, I've only, I, I did my first Instagram ad like two days ago. Other than that, I went from 400 followers right before um, the national. So I'm at like 55 now. And um, it's just, it just gets people hopefully. And it's like, it's like dating, right? If you can make the girl laugh, you could probably take her on a date, right? So I'm just trying to have, make people laugh. I'm trying to be positive in the hobby. And I'm have, I'm just having a blast doing it myself. And I'm just glad that other people liked it because I'd still be doing it even if no one liked it. Nikki's probably watching right now thinking, oh, I'm supposed to be laughing? Okay, okay. I'm just yeah. <laughs> Let's go to a couple of comments here. There's been a lot, a lot of good support uh, coming in. Uh, Tom Newman says you need a checkered, you need checkerboard slab strongs. Pepino Man says it's a must-have product for a clumsy collector like me. John's Sports Cards and Collectibles, welcome, says love it. Looks like an awesome product. I was a small business owner for 28 years, and it's always the best thing to be your own boss. Rock on, and good luck with your new endeavor. That's really, really nice. Uh, T Dot says, if I were on the move, a lot going to shows, etc., I'd be in. Okay, I don't know that I understand exactly, T Dot, but thanks for the comment. Joe says, it seems like a hybrid product style and substance, practical and an opportunity to show off our cards in ways that pop. That's a nice comment right there. Tita says, it's it's not for everyone, but there's a market. And, you know, that's that's true for everything, except for maybe like air and water, which are for everybody. But aside, yeah. aside from air and water, I don't know what else is for everybody, but definitely, you know, you're not going to you're not going to be able to make everybody happy. And uh, and some people won't. But. But like you said, there's this new generation sort of coming in with the, with the fancy uh, cases that they hold the cards in. You know, Show Your Slabs has a nice display model now that can accommodate your holder as well, I believe. Is that right? Oh, yeah. He, so he, the first one he, he had for me wasn't necessary for me. And the one that's sitting behind me now is actually a Slab Strong uh, Show Your Slabs combination where it's actually made to fit my product. And just really quickly... I know you can't tell in the picture because it's too far behind me. I do have checkerboard coming out. I I found out how to print on the rubber. I do have tiger. Uh, I have tiger stripe, zebra, like all the new prism stuff. I'm able to do anything now. So checkerboard is act is absolutely one of them. And there's actually one right behind me right now. It's just in the background. So you just need to get a sample of of all the prism parallels and uh, and there there you go. You've got some potential designs. Well, 
not all the prison parallels because there's way too many and i can't aff- i can't even afford all those colors it's uh, they need to calm down <laughs> eric says the tim's memes are absolutely hilarious Troy's collectible. Troy says, case for a case. Get the weekend to sing that for your Super Bowl 30-second commercial. Wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be very cool? Go, oh, Jim. James Fertitta says uh, golds would be a good one, too. Yeah, a nice, uh, gold or silver. Are you doing those? Uh, yeah, so like I said, you can't uh, – the one right above my hat, where is it? It has silver flakes on it. So I do have uh, silver and gold coming. Very cool. Very cool. How did you come up with the name Slab Strong? So I had, and I still own, um, five domains. Um, so I had a few, uh, slab strong was the first one I had slab bright. I think slab life. Um, when I had, when I had this original idea, I was part of a group called the sports card Sino. So I had named my product, I think the slab card Sino because of the way it like shuffled into the case or whatever. So I was really intent on doing slab strong, but in my mind, I was hoping, I was I was a little worried that maybe because I'm playing on the word strong, which is usually uh, get said after like a negative thing that happens, that people would think that I was maybe downplaying like cancer or something like that. And I just didn't want to associate that I, you know, the word something strong almost had a negative connotation. So that, that was the only truly thing I was worried about with the name was like, would, would people think that I'm kind of, but I don't think anyone even thought like that. I think I was just in my own head on that one. Um, but yeah, I stuck with Slab Strong. I had some friends that I just threw the name at and a couple of them were in marketing. Uh, one of them with T-Mobile and he was just like, no, I love it. So um, I bought up all the domain names and made some shirts, made some hats and I've just been rocking out since then. Where do you have the product made? Is this made in America? Logan, Utah. So it's a made in America product for people who want to support that, those sorts of businesses, which why wouldn't you really? Yeah. And so I had met another good guy that was real supportive um, because I didn't know what I was doing. Right. So I reached out and I have another good friend too. So I do have the opportunity to go overseas as well. Um, and, I, and some of my original samples were overseas and those are great people. And I'm still working with them on other products. Like we're still working on projects together because it's just, you know, you have to be careful with, um, especially with the price of plastics now. So I do have, I have backup plans. I have everything, but yeah, Logan, Utah. So I met, I actually, uh, same situation. I messaged a, a, a good friend of mine now named Dave out in um, Utah. And he had built this website and I was like, Hey, you know, I need, I need a website built, help me out. His best friend, Harley and his dad, Steve just happened to be, uh, mold makers and product makers out in Logan, Utah. Now it's a small family owned shop. It's in the middle of mountains. And those guys have absolutely rocked out for me at every step of the level because they recognized that I wanted to keep it, um, in America. And now who knows, right? Like, as the business grows, but so they have really had my back and I'm able to call them any, any day, any time and say, Hey, what about this color? Can you make this color? Can we, can we do gold? Like, how do we make gold? How do we, how do we do this? And they've been unbelievable for me. So I got a lot of luck, a lot of hard work, but definitely a lot of just things put it right in front of my face that normally when I was younger, I wouldn't take that opportunity. But because I was like really concentrating on starting the business, I would say, you know what, let me let me at least listen instead of just poo pooing everything that comes along. So, yeah, I have a great manufacturer. I have a couple of great manufacturers. And um, yeah, I, I couldn't be happier with what they're doing for me. I mean, for a guy who who admittedly says, you know, you don't know what you don't know. You've never run a business. You were managing other people's businesses, the restaurants, which is a very specific type of business. You seem to have put this all together pretty well between a marketing strategy, getting an investor and and more importantly, believers like the money's one thing. But, but you know, these people believe in you. That's that's a big deal to me. Uh, you know, you found you found the, the manufacturer. Now I want to ask you about distribution. What is your distribution strategy? Um, well, I'll let you just answer it that way. What's your distribution strategy? So. I, I I said the name earlier. I said a few names earlier. Peter Pacman, Renee from Storage Wars, and my guy Marlon Wells out in um, 
San Diego. So part of my marketing before, before, honestly, I wasn't even throwing anything. I only had a picture of a prototype on my phone. I didn't even have it in my hand. I drove, I flew into San Francisco. I stayed there for three days. I went to one of the greatest shops out there called Classic Materials. They loved me. It was more of like, I was showing the product, but we had a good connection. So I still talk to those guys today and my product's gonna be in their stores. So I was there three days. I drove to then Salt Lake City, went to all the card shops there, which surprisingly there's some awesome shops there, like Cards and Coffees there. Then we then we drove to Las Vegas. Uh, I met the guy that is always on the TV show Pawn Stars that they use for cards. Uh, awesome guy. And then I drove to San Diego in LA where I met Peter Pacman, Marlon, and and and, Pete, and um, Renee. And so I really took the time to get in front of people because I knew that I was going to be able to sell myself just as well as I could sell the product. So I took a lot of time. I spent a good amount of money on this road trip. Um, but through those interactions, one of the coolest people in the world, Pacman to me, really had my back that was a motivator now like i'm in his songs he like puts me in his songs which is crazy and then um yeah it's all about face to face with me and i was told by a good friend and he's right though right he was right you know a lot of times you you gotta make calls not everyone like i, I didn't have a job at that point right so i had the time not everyone's gonna have the time to do face to face but what i found is by me putting that effort in and showing that person respect like no i, I you know i want to meet you i want to shake your hand that it has been unbelievable people have really accepted it and even in, like i said even if they necessarily haven't liked the product which most people do they say you know what tim we're going to give you a chance and then in terms of so now like so that's then now i got a great friend in carbon and he had my back and, and you know we talked it over he helped me get into G, uh, gts those guys have been great for me so now i'm like like, think about this, Jeremy. May 20th, I open up my business. I am sell my first case. And now I'm in, I don't know if they're the biggest or, you know, second, but one of the largest distribution companies in America. And I'm also in talks with, and I'm, I'm forgetting what it's actually called, Andrew, I'm sorry, um, your your distribution company. But I'm in Canada now. And I've, and I've talked to Universal in Canada. So this has all happened so fast for me. And I always say, like, I don't know what I'm doing. It's because I haven't slowed down enough to really think things through, right? Like yeah. I'm just go, go, go. And it, and with so much support, it just keeps, it just keeps going and going. And like you said about early with Corey and Dan from Stand Up displays and Jeff and Carvin and all these guys just giving me advice. It's been unbelievable. Yeah. That, that's so cool. It's great to hear that you're in with uh, the distribution companies because they have, they've got contacts with all the, all the LCSs. So yeah. that's, that's that's great. And now I want to go back to the grading companies, particularly PSA and BGS. You know the the two biggest ones right now. Um, are you in still in talks with them? Are they still interested? Like, what kind of collaboration or deals are you looking to make with them? Yeah. So in terms of so with BGS, so I I actually approached SGC at the national, but I didn't have their prototype, and I found that bringing a PSA slab into the SGC part of that little world. Like the guy got it and he, and he smiled and he, and he said, Hey, you know, when you, when you come with SGC, come talk to us. But um, yeah, so I, I just got my BGS. So now I'm going to be able to approach them. Uh, but yeah, so with PSA, I can't officially say anything. I can't do anything, but we, we do talk. I have a, a, a pretty good relationship as much as you can have a relationship with some of the big guys over there. I know that they enjoy my story. I know that they like my product. I'm just going to keep pushing to show them that I'm the guy that they should back. Like I said, they did buy, they did buy purchase some from me, but now I'm going to, now it's time to like, let's make a deal and let's, let's get on PSA. And I, I think I'm going to make it happen. I'm, I'm very confident that um, my dream of being sold by PSA is going to come true. Nothing's official. I'm not trying to, like shadow anything because nothing's official but i am very confident and i'm not going to give up um until i'm there 
Stay confident, confident, brother. brother. Stay confident. Uh, BT Sports Card says, this story is as much about hustle as it is a great idea. Bravo. And Brad31 has a really good question. How much thickness do these ads, like if a box held 75 PSA cards before, how many would it hold with Slab Strongs on them? So it adds 0.246 thousands of an inch to the slab. And... (laughs) <laughs> very so, specific yeah so um i don't think i can answer that so i don't truly know because i've never filled up a, a case and i actually um made an awesome deal with clint uh from zion cases so you're gonna be able to buy my cases through zion hopefully i think that's it, it's in the book it's in the books but so with that said i designed it th- this way on purpose right I wanted to make sure I wanted to just disrupt the market of bags, but realistically, I can't compete with them. They're just they're inexpensive. I did. I also didn't want to force collectors that like my product for them to have to buy a new Zion carrying case or a different case that had different fits. So I designed it in a way that it would still work. It would still protect, but it was it was thin enough to fit and everything so you can see here and sorry for the light but you can see that this one is in still in a bag so it's the bag st- it still fits in a bag it still fits in a carrying case but the the real answer is uh 0.246 thousandths of an inch that it adds so we'd need to kind of put a put a whole bunch of, of slabs into the slab strongs put them in a box and see you know like like uh, brad says if it held 75 maybe it holds 65 now or something like that right Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, it's going to add a little bit. Um, I'm actually going to have to test that out. I'm going to have to get with with Clint and see exactly how many it goes in there so I can give a real answer because that's actually and thank you for asking that question because that is something that I should know. Yeah, that's a great question. Really good question. I think so for sure. For sure. Uh, Skeppy says, how do these fit on thicker mem card uh, PSA slabs? They don't, but that is my next size. So um, let's call it standard that is now right so 55 point like all standard cards right my next product was based off of the next size was based off of uh flawless national treasures and like exquisite right so i don't have it yet but coming out will be the same exact design but it will fit 130 point cool very cool you'd you know i don't know if you mentioned this before i thought you did but sort of like other products so right now You've got one product that fits a couple of different grading company slabs. It comes in different colors. Are you thinking? Are you thinking bigger yet? Are you already thinking about what other products you could add to your portfolio to the to the slab strong brand so that you're more than just like you think of Ultra Pro. They've got top loaders. They got mags. They got sleeves. They got all these different things. Pages, binders, everything. Have you thought of? Have you started to think about building out your portfolio of products? Yes, but with that said, I think that I'm I'm 100% concentrating on this, right? Because this is my proof of concept um, product. But absolutely, I want to be involved with, um, well, actually, before I say this, there's a lot of good people in this hobby, and there's a lot of good products that are coming out. So I had dreams of having a backpack case, right? Like I want a, a cool slab strong backpack case. Well, I met a really good friend in Clint at Zion and they came out with a design. So instead of trying to compete against him, I went to him and said, Hey, my case is fit in your case. Let's do a deal. And let's see if we can do a, a Zion combo with slab strong and have it branded that way. And then meeting Corey at show your slabs. He has a wall hanger. Hey, let's figure out a way to combine our products so that I don't have to go build one of those things and carry those around. Cause this guy, his shipping is crazy when he sends it on a pallet to the shows. You should see this. He has couches and everything. And then um, Dan from Stand Up Displays. Like, look, I would love to have thought of what he did, but I didn't, right? So why would I go and compete against a friend when we can just work together, right? So, yeah, I absolutely have some ideas, and I want to get more into just branding, even if it was just branding uh, top loaders or whatever. But my concentration is definitely on perfecting the slab strong cases, getting the five brands out there. I've actually talked to a couple of the Canadian um, grading companies 
So it's definitely more about my case at the moment and expanding the sizes, the colors, and the brands. Are there any two grading company standard size slabs that would both that that would fit in the same slab strong? Like, you know, for example, BGS's holder. I know it's very similar to the Canadian grading company MNT in yes. terms of the size. Is that are you already kind of looking at that and saying, well, I don't need another mold or I don't need another, yep. an, an, you know, another version because it's going to fit both uh, both two grading companies. Is that something that's happened to you already? Yep, and he and that's another company. So uh, a great guy over there named Dave. I just I messaged him on Instagram and I said, hey, I'm coming to the Sports Card Expo. I met up with him. We confirmed that they are essentially Beckett size cases, and because my product is a rubber silicone. The slight variations in size doesn't matter. So I sent him a free sample and hopefully we will have a, like, here's the thing, right? So I don't, HGA was the only one I branded because they're, they're completely unique to the rest of the grading companies. Now, if PSA says, Tim, throw PSA on the case, I'll put it there. But at the moment with all these, and I love these new grading companies, to be honest with you, because I love anyone expanding the hobby. You know, I wish it would tighten up a little bit. Maybe they, they could collab, but I love the new grading companies. They're all using PSA size slabs, all of them. So I don't have to like create molds and it's a, it's a lot of money to try this out, right? So I love all the new grading companies. So thank you everyone out there. My guys at TGA, TGT, which those guys are uh, awesome guys now too. Uh, who we got ECG, all my guys, FCG, all these guys, all these three name brands. Thank you so much for being yourselves and using the PSA size. All the three-letter acronyms. Pepino Man says, "Will they fit my NFT cards?" <laughs> I think that. Yes, I actually have a P uh, NFT case right here. So there it if, is. Yeah, That's beautiful. If, if uh, message me on Instagram, I'll give you my PayPal. I'll even deliver it uh, personally myself. There you, there you go, Terry Fortune. Any thoughts on one touches? Like you got the slab strong. What are the mag strong? Yeah, so I'm ex I'm really excited about this one. So. The same thing I always talk about the bags that I can't compete with them. I'm not going to be able to compete with the with the stickers that hold the mag down. But what I've been able to do is I can print any pattern on my on my cases now. So the one touch just won't have the bar in the middle. And now I can brand, let's say a breaker. Uh, uh, what's a good breaking company? So my guy Dap Sports. Let's say Daps says, Tim, I want my logo all over. And Corey already asked me to do it too. I can print on a one touch, kind of like a Louis Vuitton type look where it's just the, the, the patterns. So I'm real excited about the one touch, um, which that's going to be tough too, because a lot of these companies, they're not standard. Now the size of the card you put in them is standard, but there's slight variation. So I'm definitely going to be talking to a few uh, mag companies and um, yeah, I'm excited about that one. It'll be like a premium sticker, I guess, that also protects but you can brand it. And I'm really excited about that, but I haven't made those first. Um, I haven't made the patterns yet. So collaborations with other, with other like entrepreneurial companies in the space have been pretty important so far for you. Are you, are you working on a lot on a lot of those right now? Like, I guess really what I'm asking is how, 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 how prevalent is that in your strategy right now in terms of like, you mentioned Don Diego, you know, a, a uh, an exclusive color for her. I mean, that's, that's, I think that's a great idea. I don't know that I would have ever thought of that. How, you know, how welcoming have, has the hobby been to you? Like I asked you before about challenges, you know, pleasant surprises too. What, what, I feel like you've been mentioning them all the way through, but are there any other sort of pleasant surprises that you've encountered along the way that you haven't mentioned yet tonight? Uh, yeah, well, let, let me let me talk through it and think about that. So yeah, I, I think it's very important to, especially in a hobby like this, where everyone's it's a tight knit community. And um, networking has absolutely been I, look, I have a good product, right. But the networking and the friendships that I've made and this right here, this interview right here is proof that like it's happening, right? Cause you know, we met and I was so excited. I'm like, Jeremy, like, I, I can't wait to get on your show. And you were like, Tim, let's do it. So yeah, I, so networking is absolutely the most important thing. And when it comes to deals like the Don Diego or um, like stand up displays, making a stand that fits my product and Corey make, not only are you getting other people's customers, but you're building a true 
army of guys that have your back. And just so so then when when it's when it's time for Corey to sell his product, I'm behind his back. When it's time for Dan, I got his back. Daps, everybody's back, right? So you just can't fail. It's it's like even if you do fail, they're there to pick you up. When when my sales are down for a couple of days, you know, I make a joke with Dan or Corey and they're like, don't worry about it. And then all of a sudden I'll get a few sales like, you know, you catch your breath. So yeah, everyone I've dealt with, everyone I've dealt with has been so supportive to keep me going. So that's the most important thing is more than throwing it, more than having a good product. I, I just wanted to do something in a hobby that I love and I couldn't ask for anything more. And all the guys that I'm meeting now are, it's unbelievable. Love it, man. Skeppy says people would buy these for one touch and single screw cases, probably as much or more than slabs. This would also, this would double as holding them closed as well. That's a pretty cool uh, comment right there that it would, it would actually keep them closed too, which I think is a great benefit. Is that a benefit that you have? Well, you're not making that yet, but when you do, I mean, that's, that's a piece of marketing. That's a bullet point on your packaging. Yeah. So a lot of these companies, so like Flawless, for example, right? And there's a great company uh, out of Boston, actually, called Jersey Fusion. I don't know if you've seen those guys where they, they take a patch out, a real patch. A lot of these companies like like Flawless, if you're not going to send the card to get graded, you shouldn't take that sticker off, right? So they, you know, when Flawless sends that to you, they want you to keep it in their one touch. It's a, it's a you got your Flawless sticker. So I'm approaching them as, hey, this not only will protect it, but it might even make people think, wait, wait a minute, I'm just going to keep it closed because I can't open it anyways. So I've thought of everything like that, especially if we're specifically talking about one touches. That was like the thing was, OK, be a premium sticker, put someone's logo all over it and make people understand like, hey, don't open the one touch. Don't take that sticker off. Don't damage the card. So that's what I'm going for, too. So I'm hoping like who knows? I got a lot of big dreams. Um, nothing has happened, but. I'm convinced that I'll get to Panini and I'll convince them that they need it around their case instead of their flawless. And if that doesn't work, I'm going to make it anyways. So you might as well work with me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Keep that's believing. I, yeah. Keep believing, man. Keep believing. Yeah. So we, I'm going to say it again, guys, we got the website going on the ticker right now. Um, I don't mind if people leave this, leave the show for a few minutes, go to slabstrong.com. <laughs> Send some business Tim's way. Let's support this guy. Obviously, he's likable. Obviously, we want to see him succeed. So go take a minute. Go buy something from Tim. Send some sales his way. That'll that would be that would be great. Uh, Joe Perot says, given the backlogs in grading, not to mention financial and time investment, the presentation and preservation of our cards, slabbed and otherwise, seems like an incredible value add. Very nice comment. Bobby Burrell. Tim is great for the Tim. Tim is a great model for taking the hobby forward in a great, innovative way. Yes, he is. And Pepino Man says, sky's the limit. We'll need one for my Pelicant case. And I don't think that's a typo. I think it's called the Pelicant case. Uh, Pepino Man has a great video from the National with... Uh, actually, he was at the National with his Pelicant case. You got to go to the Pepino Man channel to see that, everybody. And I do encourage it. It's pretty, pretty funny, actually. Let's... Uh, Let's switch directions slightly. We, I kind of feel like we first probably met. Like I, I started going on to Clubhouse. I think it was February of last year, and I feel like that's where we first had contact. And of course, we then met uh, at the National. Talk a bit about the Clubhouse community because it seems to be um, moving up, moving to the next level. I would say, you know, if you remember back in February, March, April, we were on Clubhouse all the time, kind of took a break for a few months it wasn't it, what we weren't frequenting it as much as as we were before but it's kind of made a comeback is that your perception as well and and if it and talk about the the community on there yeah absolutely so uh I've, I've noticed in this last week with all this news that we're we're actually getting like newer people that or 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 people that were there before i came in and they're coming back so the rooms in there have been massive if everyone doesn't know what clubhouse is it's essentially like a, just a bunch of guys with walkie talkies talking about the hobby. Right. But everyone has a story, right? Like, you know, uh, I met, I'll say his name again, Carvin, who would have known that I would be able to, to talk to the guy that came up with this quiz every day, right? One of the coolest brands in basketball history. Uh, who would have known that I'd be able to talk to Brian Gray whenever I want and then have him actually buy a card and it got sent to him with a slab strong on it. And then he uses that as icon. And I'm like, wait, wait a minute. Like, how does Brian have that? Um, 
like who are some of the other guys? And then like our guy Abdil's watching, right? So yeah, I'm, I'm making all these friends that it would be impossible to, to make at this point, right? Because you, you, when I'm at a show, I'm folks and I'm running around crazy. And over time, because we talk at least once a week, now we all know each other. We all know each other's stories, right? And now we can talk about personal things. And now when we get on there, it's sometimes we don't even talk about the hobby. And honestly, sometimes we fight like brothers and because we'll have a different opinion on a grading company or if or what to do with uh, with the Pokemon case. And we'll have like discussions to where we got to apologize to each other afterwards because we're all so passionate about the hobby. And that's what the clubhouse room did for me was not only be able to, to, to literally get some great advice from people in the hobby, but just to be able to like spew out all these thoughts about when, when Mar, uh, metal came back and all this stuff. And there's so many opinions and uh, the community is great. And, and more and more, I just hope people get on there. And for us, right. As people that love the hobby, we love the new people coming in, come into our room, join clubhouse, um, come and ask questions of us. We love talking about the hobby. We don't care if you're, you're Eric Myers with some $4 million cards and baseballs to a guy that's simply buying packs of NBA hoops. Right. So yeah, come, come join, come talk to us. We have some fun discussions. We fight like family and, but um, yeah, man, I, 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 I'm so glad I got on there. But the, the funny thing was when I was out in California on that road trip, uh, my friend Marlon had invited me, but I had an Android phone at the time. So I couldn't get on there. And then finally, I, I because of my business and with the capabilities with the Square account with iPhone, I had to get an iPhone, hopped right on and literally have made a bunch of friends. And to go back to what you said earlier about like, what are the, some of the things that um, people have said to me? When I first came in a clubhouse, the first thing I said was, how you doing? I'm Tim. I invented this product, blah, blah, blah. And you know how clubhouse is, right? All the guys are already there. I'm sure a bunch of people were like, here we go. Here's another product guy coming on here trying to sell his product. But after I introduced myself, I truly like try not to talk about it too much because I'd rather just talk about cards with the guys like, oh, you guys know me now. Um, but now the community is so funny. It's it's such a good time in there. Yeah, it, it, it is. It is fun for sure. A couple of people are asking what it is. Albert Jones says, what's Clubhouse? Birds on the bat is Clubhouse an app. Yes, it is yeah. an app. It's a social media app. And it is like Tim described. It's basically a bunch of people on walkie talkies that can hear each other talk. But it works a little bit more, a little bit slicker. Yeah. And yeah. if it's uh, it's actually it's, it's a really it really works well. Um, I do I do enjoy it. Uh, I, I do a lot of listening often if I'm uh, you know, I'm working, I'll have it on or even if I'm driving home, I'll put it on, listen to it through my car. And uh, and that's for that's fun for sure. Corey Carr says, yeah, it's an app. Come try it out. Type in sports cards. Yeah. So what he means is when you get there, I think you can set your your likes or your preferences or your interests. And I think what Corey Carr is saying, uh, let let them know you like sports cards, and and then you just follow people like you do on on an Instagram sort of thing. And when they when they go live or when they're talking in a room, you'll maybe get a notification and you can go join and listen in. And there's no pressure. You there's there, you you can be in the audience or you can be on the stage. And most people are often on the stage, but in some bigger rooms, uh, like where there's a thousand people, you might have three or four people talking, and the rest of the people are in the audience. And uh, it's more of a, a listening sort of activity. But anyway, it's it's a great app. And as you can tell, the uh, just from what Tim is saying, the community on Clubhouse has been very supportive and uh, and fun. And, and you know, it's like a bunch of brothers and sisters who like to get on there and and uh, you know, kind of poke fun at each other here and there as well. Especially when there's a few key a few key instigators that are some that are often uh, in the rooms, but they they do make it fun. In all your journey here, Tim, listen, we've, we've been going on for a while already. This has been fun. In all of your journey so far, what do you – hold on. I just noticed Birds on the Bat says, and I am officially on Clubhouse, just like yeah, that. There you so go. That's how quick you can go download the app. I hope people are going to slobstrong.com. Again, I encourage you guys, let's support Tim. Let's send some business his way. Check out the product. Spread the word. I want to see this thing succeed. And it's simply because <laughs> – because I like the guy. I mean, that's really all it takes. Eric says, it's horrible and I hate everybody. But, you know, if you know Eric, you know that he likes to say that quite a bit. And he's really not horrible. And Eric actually loves everybody. Yeah. Okay. In all in your journey, Tim, which has been, I mean, what a ride you're on. Um, 
I think it's awesome, dude. I'm very happy for you. Um, what have you learned about the hobby overall? What are your, what are your, let's start. I have three questions. What have you learned about the hobby? What have you learned about business? And what have you learned about being an entrepreneur so far that you would give advice to the next person who's going to start a company in our space or another one really? Uh, so with the hobby, man, it's still a kid's game. I know the, I know the money is up there. When I say kid's game, I mean like we're all kids in this game, right? We love, I could open a pack every time I see a new car. I just love it. So I was surprised by like some of the hobby guys that have amazing collections are just still, kill it's just so crazy to see cards I never even knew existed, right? Because at the time when you're like, I wasn't buying the high end stuff, this cards out there. So I love the knowledge that people bring. Um, I haven't really run into anyone in the hobby that I didn't necessarily didn't like or didn't support in a certain way because I just love the hobby expanding. Um, yeah, the hobby has just been, I, I, I couldn't ask for anything more. Like I said, it, I never have to work for someone again, hopefully. And uh, I could I could talk about cards all day. And then, so what was the second part? Uh, business and really being an entrepreneur. And, and it, like, you know, if you're going to give advice to someone starting out, what would the advice be that you would give to somebody based on what you've learned in your, in your relatively short journey so far? Sure. Uh, I would say, don't be embarrassed about what you don't know. Because I'm going into this, literally learning as I go. And it's probably one of the most prideful things I've done. And the other thing is don't, don't be scared to ask for help or, or, or maybe even sound a little foolish by not understanding something, right? Because when you surround yourself with the right people, someone will give you a little nudge in the right direction, or, or maybe as a friend say, Hey Tim, maybe this or that. Right. So in business for me, it was number one, don't give up. Number two, don't be embarrassed by what you don't know. And number three, ask for ask for help if you need it. Ask someone. How, I, this is a question I just thought of. How important was it for you in launching the business and getting buy-in? How important was it to actually have the prototype to show people versus just an idea on paper? Yeah. So, but so it was really exciting for me to see it work as well. And then, so once it's in my hand, there's no stopping me. There's no stopping me from showing the passion that I have about it. Like I said, and someone said it earlier, not 100%, 100% of the people are going to buy my product. But if you, give me the, if you give me a minute to talk to you and you give me your time, thank you for that. Thank you for letting me do my pitch. Uh, thank you for listening to me. Thank you for the kind words, even if, you know, you don't want to just say it to someone, you know. Um, yeah, just, you know, it's just been, it's been such a wild ride that even still, I start to think of answers that you're asking me and I'm, I'm just so excited and my mind starts going, oh, I want to tell them about this and I want to tell them about that. And um, that's what it's about, man. Just staying excited, staying motivated, and I'm just going to keep killing it. I, I honestly, I just did it right now because I halfway through that answer, I forgot what the actual question was. But that's just life. <laughs> yeah. That's life. Dude, you got a lot going on. You're you're on a roll. Keep it, keep it going. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up, everybody. Um, this was this was great, Tim. I, I like your story. Very very inspirational. As I've said several times already. Uh, glad to see the support from the chat for you as well. Um, I I mean, listen, uh, I, I'm just I'm just happy for you, dude, and uh, can't wait to see you at the the Mint Collective at the end of March in, in Las Vegas. I hope to see you at a Dallas show, and of course the National in Atlantic City. A uh, couple comments we'll go to and uh, and then we'll wrap it up. And just a reminder to everybody, we'll definitely be uh, we'll be back on the channel here. We'll go. We're, it's it's uh, it's 930 my time right now, mountain time. So whatever time's on your end, it's 930 for me. We'll be back live in 15 minutes for after hours. Joining me is Sean Cates. You probably know him from the Victory Investments uh, Instagram account. One of the one of the best. He's the guy who who wrote, sang. Uh, did the video for the opening uh, the opening intro video to, to Sports Cards Live. He'll be joining me. It's been a long time coming with him. Very excited to have him on. Sean, if you're watching, get ready. We'll go live in 15 minutes. So I want I want everybody to come back, take a break, go get go grab a drink, hit the hit the can, whatever you got to do. We'll be back live with Sean in about 15 minutes. Other uh, upcoming next weekend, next Saturday is going to be the PWCC premiere with Eric Myers and Adam Gray. And then a week from then, uh, as you can see on the ticker right now, we have Suze from uh, now from Golden, previously from Tops. We'll be joining the show. Really excited to have to have her on. 
So be sure to join all those episodes. And tomorrow on Collectible Live on the Collectible TV YouTube channel is my friend. And uh, this guy doesn't have a lot of social media presence, but he's been uh, he's a well-known collector in the circles he runs. A good friend of mine, Todd Poland, will be joining on Collectible Live tomorrow. Going to go through some last comments here, Tim, and then we are going to end this episode. I just want to see where we left off right now on the comments. And uh, Brian Kingsley, going well, Brian. Great to have you on the show. Thanks for thanks for clicking in. He says, I've been watching Behind the Curtain. Great job. Keep on going. Keep on, keep on keeping on the hobby. You bet. You bet. Brian Gray, great job, Tim. All caps. You know BG likes, uh, likes to be yeah. boisterous. Thanks I heard the it. Comment. Thanks for the comment, BG. Joshua Sherber just bought 10 clear cases to give it a try. Way to go, Joshua Sherber. Thank you. Thank you for supporting. Thank you, Thank you for supporting Tim's Thank business. You. Troy says, thanks for the live stream, Jeremy and Tim. Keep the hustle going, Tim. I love the support you're getting, dude. I love it. I love it. Skeppy says, Tim definitely has the entrepreneur brain. It never stops thinking. Darren says, what's up? Just jumping on. Went to a card show today. Good times. We'll see you later on uh, in about 15 minutes, Darren, with uh, Sean from Victory Investments. Corey, your buddy, says, good job, homie. Always sincere and the realest guy. And check out the Show Your Slabs YouTube channel, everybody. Corey and Tim have partnered for their own live podcast called Slab Slab Business. Business. Slab Business. Slab Business. business. Check out Slab Business. We got Abdil here. Great interview. Jeremy, can we quickly grade the 86 Fleer? Yes, guys. Grade the 86 Fleer. I would say it's probably trimmed but I will not slab it. So no problems there. I will never resell it. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, big unit. Pepino, always good to see you. Hey, you mentioned these guys earlier on, TGT, the Transparent Grading Team. Great to have you. They say, we always throw our slabs in the slab strong. That's great support. All right, Tim, final words, comments from you, and then we're going to, we're going to, we're going to end this. Yeah. I just want to thank you, Jeremy. Um, You know, I've been like a big fan. We've been really cool since the beginning. Thank you everyone else out there. Um, now, it's a personal thing, but I want to let you know all the support I'm getting, I'm not going to let you guys down. I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep grinding it out. I'm going to get into everywhere I want to get into. And I want to just thank everyone so much for supporting me and laughing at my dumb memes and laughing at me. And let's just have a good time. This hobby is great. Let's keep it moving. No more negative stuff in this hobby. Let's get these guys out of here. And let's all come together as a family and keep keep rocking this thing out. Great message to end on, Tim. Guys, Follow Tim on Instagram at slab underscore strong. The website slabstrong.com. Brian Kingsley, thank you very much. Bobby, appreciate you. Thank you so much, everyone. We'll see you on After Hours with Sean Cates from Victory Investments in about 13 minutes. Thanks for joining, and we'll see you soon.